All right, so the second step in the debugging process that we're going to talk about is understanding what the problem is. And that is deeper than just the problem is that a test isn't succeeding. That involves going to the test suites and understand why, understanding why the test is failing. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the test suite again um, because I'm hunting down this problem that I introduced into the code. Um, and you'll see that a couple tests are passing, but there's a few tests that are failing. Now, one of the things that, so it turned out I made one change to the code, a very tiny change, and it broke three of the tests. And so one of the things that you can, um, that's helpful to do when you start reading the test suites, um, and when you start developing test suites for your own projects, you'll have a better sense of this. But to understand kind of like what tests are testing simpler functionality. Um, so in this case, there is, uh, I have a test called test places route that tests whether or not the server is correctly providing the list of places in the way that the client expects. That's the first test up here. Now, if this doesn't work, then the uh, other two tests that are failing are also going to fail. So essentially, test three and test four, the test that tests whether the client can retrieve the places correctly, that can't work if the server is not providing them correctly. The test that uh, looks to see if the uh, number of places is correct on the screen, well, that can't work correctly if the client can retrieve the list of tests because the server isn't providing it properly. So essentially, you know, rather than looking at test four or test three and trying to start there, what I'm realizing by sort of my understanding of the code, and you could realize this, I think, yourself by looking through the tests and by, by sort of based on your understanding of how the app works, is that something is wrong with the server and that's causing these other failures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero in on this one test called test places route. I'm gonna run this and this is the test I'm gonna use in my debugging. Now it's possible that there are other problems so sometimes when you fix one test like this, the other errors won't go away automatically because there's something else wrong somewhere else. But it usually makes sense to work on a test that might be causing the other failures first because if you can fix it, then you're done, right? Um, okay, so the next thing you're gonna have to do, and this is one of the things that we challenge you with with the project, is you will frequently need to understand what the test suites are doing. Um, because the test suites are sort of trying to establish various behaviors about your application. And if you don't understand what the test suite is doing, it's hard to pass it. Um, so what does that require? It requires sort of going through the test line by line, reading the commentary, and you know, trying to gain some understanding of what's going on. Now, that understanding may be at a somewhat high level. That's okay. The other thing that we want to do whenever we have a failing test case is figure out where is it failing? Right, what about it is failing? And to do that, I'm gonna look at the output. So if I scroll down all the way down here, right, um, it says, uh, you know, there, there's some information about the failure. The failure is because request should have succeeded, value of is successful, should have been true. Um, and here is this really, really important piece of information. And we're gonna train you to look for these whenever you look at error output from Android Studio. This is a line number. The line numbers that you see, particularly when they are line numbers in code that's part of this project, are super, super useful. Whether we're looking at a stack trace, which we'll look at later, or whether we're looking at testing output. This tells us where the test failed, okay? So if I click on this, the cool thing is Android Studio will take me right there. So this is the part, so essentially what the test is doing the test suite is doing is it's running a series of steps and then it's checking things about what happened to make sure that they line up with the expectations that are embodied in the test. If they don't, it fails. So this part of the test case didn't even run because it failed right here, okay? Um, and so what happened? So, you know, one of the things, uh, and, and that, that, that this is where we have to start figuring out kind of like what's going on with the test suite. So, uh, what, what did I do here? Let's go all the way up to the top because this is all connected together. So what I did is I built a request to the server, our backend server that would normally be running the cloud somewhere, but in our case is running sort of co-located on the phone with the app. 
and I'm asking it for this route called places. I execute the response here, and what I'm asserting here in this test is that it should have succeeded. And so places response is successful. Let's hover over this and see if it will write. So it says returns true if the code is in this range. And what that means is that this is what happens when the server can correctly execute the request. So, you know, so what's happening is somehow when I try to execute this request, the server is failing the request for some reason. So we can dig into this a little bit more in the next section when we talk about tracing, right? Right, where we're gonna try to figure out like what's happening. But sometimes we can use the test suite itself to extract some of this information. So I have this thing called places response. Um, so what let's do is let's see if there's information here that might be helpful. So, um, so is successful prints as Boolean, but there's also this thing called code. So I'm going to print off the code and you know, I'm not necessarily saying you would know to do this, but you might search around a little bit and this might come up as a suggestion. Um, so let's see. So essentially this is saying is successful returns true if the code is in this range with 200 to 300. Those are numbers, it's all numbers remember, that are used by the server to indicate that the request succeeded. So what actually is the code that's being returned here? Let's run the test again. Um, and you'll see that the code is 404. Now, if I go over to my trusty browser and I Google HTTP 404, what I'm going to find out, what I'm going to find quickly is this is called page not found. And for, you may have seen a 404 error before uh, when you're browsing the web. It means that the server is telling you, I don't have a document or I don't know how to serve this request. Like you asked me for something that I don't have. And so what's happening here is I'm asking it for this route called places and it's responding with a 404. That's not what I expected to happen because this route is supposed to work. And the fact that it's not working is causing other parts of the app to fail. That's why I have those other tests that are failing. So start, you know, once I've cleaned up my code, the next thing is to go to the test suite figure out where it's failing and try to understand as much about the failure as possible. This is a place where it's totally okay to ask for help, post on the forum and say, hey, what is this part of the test suite doing? Can I get a little more explanation? Is there something else I should be looking at here like this code? Because it turns out the 404 is actually gonna be pretty useful when we go start working on the next step, right? Okay, so what do we know at this point? We know that this test is failing right here on line 119, and it's failing because the server, instead of returning a 200, which is a successful error code, it's returning a 404, right? So actually we have a lot of information about what's going on that will help us once we start looking at the server code, which is what we'll do next, and we'll do some tracing.